Now, ladies and gentlemen, you've been a terrific audience, so I thought we'd take a break from the singing to tell you all a quick little episode. This is a completely true and highly educational episode that happened to me in my class not too long ago when we were about to depart on our fantastic summer field trip to, among other places, Johannesburg, South Africa. Now, the first thing you should know is, this will be no normal field trip. Oh. And when we got off that bus, we found that we were not on the warm, welcoming, relatively safe streets of Johannesburg. No, we were in the mean, mean corridors of Walkerville Elementary. <gasps> now, Walkerville, of course, is home to a small, unimportant, rigorous, <laughs> aptitude <laughs> testing. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, police. It's called the SAT. <laughs> The SAT, of course, is the finest money grab on the East Coast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now I was wandering those hallowed halls of Walkerville, trying not to run into that brat Ralphie, hey. when I noticed a small school beginning to assemble. Assemble, assemble, assemble! Off in the distance, there was a rocket bus shooting fire! Fire! And it was getting higher and higher. Higher, higher, higher! But ladies and gentlemen, that was not the most astonishing thing. No. For inside that flying bus wreathed in inefficiently combusted exhaust fumes, there was a small, spunky Liz the Lizard. Oh, hey. And she was driving the bus. <gasps> and Miss Frizzle was shouting, help us, help us, somebody save our inexplicably intelligent class pet. So the crowd thought for a moment. Hmm. And then the cleverest one among them shouted, you're running out of fuel. Get to the magic rocket fuel gas pump. It's your only chance. Pump is your only chance. Actually, the bus just takes diesel, said Miss Frizzle. And the crowd was pretty exasperated. Oh. But being intrepid souls, they thought for a moment more. And then being intrepid academic minds, they researched in really uncomfortable reading positions for an indefinite period of time. According to my research, we're screwed. Does anyone else see how ridiculous this is? I mean, there's no way that this peasant learns. Come on, guys. This isn't rocket science. Carlos. Suddenly, inspiration struck. Shrink the bus to soften the landing. At least we can soften the landing. Shrink the bus to soften the landing. At least we can soften the landing. Whoa, but who will catch it? It'll splatter on the ground like Timothy's ice cream cone. Conan! Seemingly, all hope was lost. Oh. But just then, in that very grim time, there stepped forth from that crowd the incredible, the adorable, the budding, the third grader, Andover Exeter the fourth. I want to be just like my dad. Aww. He's so little. And indeed he was, ladies and gentlemen, because Andy here was the star punter for the Walkerville Elementary Football team. <laughs> and Andy wasn't about to drop that bus, because Andy, a never, a dwops, a nothing. Except for pre algebra. Aww. <laughs> now, Andy decided to warm up for this catch with a few brief but compelling admissions arguments. I'm a legacy. Ooh. That building is named after me. Ah. But just then, a uh, spry young middle school admissions officer stepped forth from that crowd to wish Andy a few words of holistic assessment. No, Andy. <laughs> and it seems that that hard dose of reality was all our very young hero needed. For at last, Andy was ready. This will make a good college essay topic. That crowd was ready. This, this will make a good college essay topic. And even that inexplicably intelligent lizard and that flying bus wreathed in inefficiently combusted exhaust fumes, that inefficiently, inexplicably intelligent lizard was ready. <laughs> and so our fearless redhead educator faded back for what was about to become the second or third most important shrink ray blast out of the half dozen she had already performed. And she shrunk that bus. It was a perfect scale model. It drifted to the right. It drifted to the left. And seemingly defying all known laws of physics, it shrunk, turned into a submarine, spun around, and flew back to the right again. And with a dive, Andy caught that baby. The bus. The bus. He caught the bus. And he's so excited. He spiked it. Just like his dad, am I right? Ladies and gentlemen, there's a moral to every story, and this story's moral should be quite clear. That is exactly what happens when you try to coast through life as a legacy student. Thank you. Yeah.